<sighs> this should have gone in a lot. I, I should have done this about a week ago, but, well, as you can see in the background, I have myself a new computer, and, well, because, yeah, my MacBook Pro, well, it was it, it was that time, you know, it, it, it had a hard, uh, had a hardware malfunction with the, uh, let's see, with the, what was it, the memory drive or a logic, oh yeah, the logic board, and so, yeah, I had to take off last week in order to get that fixed, so, Anyways, I put this off for as long as I can. Ryu Soldier episode 40. Anyway, Comrade Zio episode 47. Ryu Soldier episode 21. Let's just get this over with at this point. Because, yeah, following the death of Comrade Aqua in the last episode, Sogo is, uh, yeah, told by Schwartz he has only three options now. Either he destroys the driver, uh, or uh, actually. Uh, I forgot what, uh, well, let's see. He either kills Tsukiyomi and prevents the world from being destroyed. He either sacrifices himself, uh, or, uh, letting Schwartz get away with all of his crap. Or he becomes Omazio. But as if that wasn't enough, there's time compression going on. Yeah, apparently there, uh, yeah. Apparently, as uh, this is Schwartz's uh, end game, the whole, t uh, uh, this is Schwartz, uh, Schwartz's final end game. Uh, yeah, apparently, w when Sogo obtained all the ride watches and became Grand Zio, uh, he basically merged all the parallel rider worlds together, and yeah, basically, all the worlds are overlapping, uh, mixing with each other in a haphazard fashion, resulting in basically the entire universe going kablooey. Uh, I'm not even going to get started on how this doesn't make any goddamn sense. Okay, so, yeah, when so, uh, yeah, basically, here's what I figure, how, this is what I'm piecing together as to how this is possible. Yeah, when Sogo created the Ride Watches, or at least uh, before, uh, before we were introduced to another Zio, when the Time Jackers created another Riders, they stole the history of those, com of common Riders to basically overlap them with the another Riders. And when Sogo obtains the Ride Watches, uh, in those instances, it created a splinter timeline where those common riders didn't exist. And um, yeah, you know how with the right watches um, taking, uh, if the common riders, if the right watches created, their villain faction goes with it. Yeah, apparently the right watches are now starting to crack, and locations and monster factions are just popping up all over Japan. And basically, yeah, the first the Sky Wall, then Yggdrasil, and then Futo Tower, and following that, uh, there's like floods of Roy Mutes, uh, Dopons, Inves, uh, uh, basically every single uh, every single villain faction that the Heisei Riders, uh, oh, uh, that the Heisei Kamen Riders fought, they're all basically uh, haphazardly merging together from these alt, uh, from these splinter timelines into the, uh, into the ZO, alt, uh, into the ZO timeline, and basically it's just gonna result in Basically, the universe being destroyed. And, yeah, we learn finally why Schwartz even did all this crap in the first place. His plan was basically to save his own world. Uh, he basically... Uh, yeah, basically, his world is going to be destroyed for some reason. Bas uh, because of... Uh, because it's just being destroyed because of time compression or some crap like that. So his master plan was to steal the power uh, from Tsukiyomi, uh, somehow managed, uh, somehow gain the ability to create another Riders, create those another Riders, have Sogo become Omazio, and this would result, uh, let's see, destroy the amalgamated world, and that would result in his world being together, uh, and his world being all right, and him becoming king. This plan is great. Um, I don't even. People say Bioshock Infinite is overly complicated. No, this uh, this makes Bioshock Infinite look about as simple and straightforward as Mario, uh, Super Mario. Oh my god, I can't even begin to. Yeah, just apparently, yeah, the right watch is starting to crack. So this results in. Uh, monster factions returning, and yeah, uh, one of those villain factions is the Roy Mutes, and one of them is Machine Chaser. And uh, yeah, uh, Chaser says that he hunts down common riders, even though he's come from, um, in his world. It's uh, he's an AR chaser. He claims that he doesn't know common riders, but hunts them, hunts them down. And yeah, basically, when uh, when Gates and uh, Wasp confront him and well point out that contradiction. 
Well, yeah, okay, uh, backing up a little bit. Between episode 46 and 47, the events of Kamen Rider Zio's movie over Kortzer happens, and in there, I'm guessing that it's, um, guessing in there, well, from what I was able to glean, uh, the villain's goal in that movie is to eliminate Kamen Rider Drive from existing, probably in order to facilitate the creation of the Drive Ride Watch. And yeah, they encountered Go. And so, yeah, that's how Gates is able to learn that basically Chase's memories are, uh, this Chaser's memories are being overwritten by the AR world. And, uh, oh my god, this hurts. This doesn't make any s Yeah, no. Okay, we've all figured out that since episode one of Kamen Rider Zio, it's been held together with popsicle sticks, duct tape, and a lot of prayer. Yeah, uh, uh, the show's held together with ducks, uh, with duct, uh, uh, held together with popsicle stick. Uh, po uh, yeah, the show's plot structure has been held together with po uh, popsicle sticks, duct tape, and a lot of prayer. And at this point, everything is just collapsing. It's falling apart. We have no, I, I have no idea what the hell is going on here. The villains, uh, the villains. Uh, yeah, Schwartz's big plan doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, Omazio. Apparently, well, yeah, since some time has passed, apparently the reason why Schwartz created, uh, even created Omazio in the first place is because he himself, even with the powers of his general, uh, uh, the powers of his family's time manipulation and another decade, does not actually have the power to destroy, uh, to destroy time, and that's where Omazio comes in. He wants Sogo to become Omazio so that he can, uh, uh, facilitate the destruction of the burst world. And in turn, save Schwartz's world, which is supposed is supposed to be a splintered time. Oh, I want to get. Mm, I'm not letting this show beat me, but I. It's. Oh my god, it is so tempting. I can't. I cannot give up on this. I. I uh, look, Kamen Rider Zio is a absolute fuster cluck. Uh, oh yeah, and yeah, we. Oh, uh, all right, so. Uh, let me see if I try. Uh, if I can at least try to get the details straight because again, everything it's just nothing but fight scenes. And yeah, actually, so uh, Sukasa actually takes Sogo and Sukiyomi back to 2058 uh, to go and confront young, uh, let's see, Alfina and Schwartz. You know, Alfina is Sukiyomi's original name. And yeah, Sukiyomi could have just ended this all by having her Fi's gun, pointing her gun at Sh uh, at teenage Schwartz's head, and pulling the trigger until she hears click. Until he's nothing but a pile of laser scorches and chunky salsa, but she can't because she's an idiot. Because everyone in the show is an idiot, especially Sogo. Sogo could have prevented all of this from happening if he just refused the driver in the first place, but he won't because he's a selfish, narcissistic, egotistical little shit. And... Yeah, uh, according to Schwartz, that's the reason why, uh, well, yeah, uh, Schwartz said that Sogo had the perfect qualifications to be king. Uh, I interpreted that as Sogo is the absolute perfect mor uh, perfect moron. He is the perfect accomplice for, uh, to go along with Schwartz's dumbass plan. I actually remember something from uh, something from Young Justice Abridged. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, check it out. It's really funny. Based, for those who don't know, in that series, Superman, who is basically everything wrong with America, that's literally his character bio, he runs for, he uh, decides to run for president. And who's his, who's his vice president? Alfred Pennyworth, who in the Young Justice of Bridge universe is basically, who, he's, he's literally the devil. Uh, he's an annoying, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, Oh, let's see. It's a, he's a sass talking Scottish bastard, and he'll uh, he'll send your nightmares all straight to hell just for the fun of it, you stupid boy. While he goes and shots your mother. <laughs> and yeah, ba uh, yeah, w uh, with Alfred as his VP, I'm reminded of this little line here. I always wanted to rule the world, but I can never find the right shot puppet. And then this idiot shows up, and if my hand fits perfectly. Yeah, basically, Sogo and Schwartz are their team Superman man. And yes, uh, Sogo is dumbass Superman. Ugh. Yeah, I could not uh, sum that up more succinctly. All right, yeah, Schwartz is, Alfred, uh, Schwartz is demon Alfred, and Sogo is dumbass Superman. It's uh, just the perfect patsy. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, sh uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, when they go to confront, uh, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, Schwar uh, Teenage Schwartz managed to get away, but not before actually managing to kill Tsukasa, but he actually retreats as soon as Kaito shows up, uh, yeah, um, 
And yeah, uh, well, to go and pad things out even further, Kaito ha- decides to revive Sogo using the uh, using the another ZO2 right watch that he got from well at the end of that whole fiasco to well reverse time and well bring Sukasa back to life. But it turns out that that has a side effect, since yeah, using the another ZO2 right watch causes him to, uh, causes Kaito to turn into another ZO2. And his and he and his personality gets screwed around with by the another ride watch, so they have to go. Uh, so they have to go and fight another ZO2 again. Only this time, uh, well, oh yeah, uh, backing up a bit, Sukasa is able to turn into Decade again. Since, well, yeah, you're not gonna believe this. Uh, yeah, um, uh, when uh, when Sukasa gave Sogo the Decade ride watch, he actually only transplanted half of his power into the Decade ride watch. And kept the other half for himself, and that half got taken by Schwartz in order to become another decade. Just, just roll with it at this point. It's only it, 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 as long as as long as the show ends quicker. So yeah, uh, Sogo gives uh, Sukasa the decade ride watch back. He becomes decade again, and he uses a and now he has a ZO ride car to transform into ZO. While Sogo turns into Grand ZO, and the two Z- proper ZOs destroy another ZO two once and for all, finally destroying the ride watch and freeing Kaito. And yeah, just like when uh, just like when Momotaro's took the Deno ri- uh, took the Deno ride watch back. Now that Tsukasa's decade again, the Grand Zeo Ride Watch is gone. And it could not have disappeared at a... Oh, and yeah, as if that wasn't bad enough, all the other Ride Watches are destroyed... Uh, all the other Ride Watches are destroyed too, which means uh, every single villain faction from Kuga through Build, they're all back, and they're all rampaging, and they're all ready to tear the world a new asshole. And apparently the only way to stop it is to go to the future and kill Omazio. Or something. Uh, yeah, so on top of all the fu- villain factions coming back, uh, Chase uh, struggling with uh, with these altered memories and all the stuff with Schwartz. Yeah, uh, the world's basically going to hell in a handbasket and it's not getting any better. This is... Yeah, no, this... This basically is Final Crisis. Uh, yeah, the only thing that's missing is for Sogo to destroy Schwartz and Omazio by singing to, uh, by singing a specific tune for a vibrational frequency to destroy the anti-life equation or some crap like that. Just please, just let this end. Okay, just one more episode. I have one more episode on record, and then and uh, p- tomorrow or the next couple of days. Zio's finale, and then we can move on to Kamen Rider Zero One and get to something good for once. Ah, Ugh. Christ on a bike. Uh, somebody save me from this pool of misery. All right. Anyways, Ryu Soldier episode twenty one. Yeah. Speaking of dead monsters coming back, we have Ryu Soldier episode twenty one. And it looks like the dramatic change in staff and writers is actually starting to pay off a bit. Since, you know, we actually have a premise for some actual te- actual tension and drama. Yeah, we open up on this uh, on episode 21 with, uh, well, apparently a lot of a lot of wildlife disappearing. You know, like fish, uh, you know, like bears, bunnies, birds, just suddenly vanishing. And all of a sudden, people that were either dead or thought to have been missing for several years suddenly just start popping back up. And yeah, among them includes uh, let's see, uh, Yui's mom, uh, Master Pink, and Tank Joe. Yeah, you know the first general for the Druidons that you know got killed in like less than six episodes and got replaced with Wiser, which is like that. Anyways, yeah, Tank Joe's back, and well, yeah, this actually creates a bit of a mystery as to how this is happening. Oh uh, yeah, on top of all that, there's apparently. Uh, Oh well, there's uh, there's a new Kishiryu who's running around, uh, yeah, called uh, Shadow Raptor, uh, who apparently went into space with the Druidons to I don't know maybe track them down or something like that. Anyways, he's back, and well, yeah, new power up, and uh, oh yeah, along with Shadow Raptor, he's able to summon his twin brother Shine Raptor, and yeah, I'm betting next episode that the two are going to combine since you know basically they are both thin Velociraptors and yeah, smash them both together, and you get one big Velociraptor. Uh, yeah. You basically get a dinosaur two face. Rawr! Uh, Or even better, dinosaur one face. Alright, yeah. We all know that 
Oh, and interestingly enough, when Master Pink came around, uh, uh, came around, well, where the Ryu soldiers are hiding out, she recognized Yui's father and and addressed him by uh, as the name uh, and called him Set. And yeah, even though Yui's dad has no idea what the hell she's talking about, even though, and yeah, at the end of the episode, we see a uh, you know the mysterious rogue figure that's been walking around. Uh, yeah, like every so often, he takes off his mask and reveals, yeah, he looks exactly like Yui's father, and he's actually set. I'm calling it now. Uh, Yui's father is actually is going to be actually like some alternate personality, uh, you know, that he cre- uh, that set created to basically blend in with humanity and just basically his own personal form of retirement. Just yeah, lock away all of his memories of being a member of the Ryuso tribe away, uh, settle down with a normal human woman, have Yui, and just. Basically, uh, yeah, basically just, uh, yeah, basically his, it's his retirement from all the Ryu soldier crap, uh, from the Ryu soldier tribe crap. Ugh. But yeah, there's gotta be some reason why these dead people are suddenly, uh, suddenly coming back, and yeah, a, a whole bunch of animals being uh, suddenly disappearing and dead people suddenly coming back. I got a stinking suspicion that there's some, uh, some nasty, uh, some nasty transmutation going on. And, yeah, I'm betting all those uh, animals are basically the ingredients for a Philosopher's Stone. There's somebody who's bringing these guys back, and uh, probably for some nefarious purpose. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, sure, they revived Master Pink and Yui's mom, but they also, rev- uh, uh, Tonk Joe also got revived, so there's obviously some bad mojo going on. And yeah, uh, seeing Master Pink one last time, I'm betting that uh, all the revived people um, uh, is basically some other Druidon plan. And as soon as, uh, uh, basically when everybody thinks that, oh, our loved ones are back, they're suddenly going to turn into, basically they're going to turn into Black Lanterns or something like that. And just, um, I don't know, start throwing scorn and spite at their loved ones and killing them for some purpose. And uh, I don't know. I'm betting, uh, yeah, some sort of uh, emotion, uh, some stabbing you in the heart, twisting the knife uh, kind of thing. Kind of like what Bang Ray did when he revived uh, Yamato's mom and, uh, and Zuojir. Yeah, just, yeah, he brought her back to life just to kill her all over again, just to uh, basically just emotionally scar the heroes. <laughs> or at least that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, just as long as they don't, uh, just as long as they don't ignore this plot point, I mean, we know it's going to happen. Uh, there's gonna uh, there's gonna be some point where the other shoe drops with this plot point, and we know it's gonna uh, it's gonna piss off the real soldiers, but good. All right, so Zio, just it's almost over. Just two more episodes left to cover. At least at some point we have Power Rangers Beast Morphers to talk about on top of this, so I'll actually have something good, something that's you know consistently good. And yes, I actually like Beast Morphers. And yeah, so it's the, it's the best we've gotten for Power Rangers in a long time. I'm going to take what I could get. It's miles above the Neo Saban era, but that's not saying much. Not exactly as good as RPM. Oh yeah, and apparently there's going to be a crossover between Beast Morphers and RPM at some point involving Dr. Kane, Colonel Truman. And yeah, I'm agreeing with some people. Hopefully it involves a retcon that removes all the stuff that happened in Clash of the Red Rangers. Yeah, it basically removes that alternate universe bullcrap. So, I mean, yeah, no, it's actually already established in Ninja Steel that there is a multiverse out there now. So, whatever, at least just give them a, at least give the, at least just do something better than what happened with uh, Clash of the Red Rangers. Just, we do not need that again. And all right, let's see, Ryu Soldier starting to look, it's starting to show promise, and Zio just let it end, please. I am so sick of done, and yeah, I know that this show isn't going to finally, yeah, no, sure, uh, uh, for anyone who's thinking that this is going to be the last nail in the coffin for sure, Kura, forget it. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, if this, if all of sure Kura's previous actions in the last, you know, like, two decades or so, all of his crap that he's pulled hasn't gotten him shit canned, that this isn't going to do it. Uh, yeah, no, Toei's going to keep him around. He's going to continue to uh, to dump on Kamen Rider and Sentai until he finally croaks. That's what's going to happen. Just uh, just at least get, Z- uh, get Zio over and done with so we don't have to deal with Shurikura for at least five more years. Just at least give us that. <sighs> We're almost done. Almost done. 